What's up, Raging Nation? How's it going? This is Alex Yu, and you're watching The Road to TF5. This is Webster's We're Talking About Transformers last night. This is episode number 80. And I want to say happy birthday to Jose Gaming and Unboxings, Pinhead, Skycoder, Lazarus Walker, and also Pig7555. Happy birthday to all y'all. Hope you have a good one. Thank you for being part of the Raging Nation. And also a big shout out goes out to Riley Herrera. He's the concept artist for the aircraft carrier Cybertronian. It's something that I showed in episode number 78. And actually that aircraft carrier was designed as concept art for the first film. However, it was too expensive to make it a reality and therefore it ended up being unused concept art. But it's still awesome and I just wanna say it's fantastic. Keep up the good work. So let's talk about the filming of Transformers Last Night in London. And it's still going on in London and around London. And I originally thought that Isabella Moner was done filming all her scenes for Transformers Last Night. I was wrong. Actually, she will be filming in London, and as a matter of fact, I think she's already filmed because she posted on Instagram, work tomorrow, hashtag T5, the T being Transformers, and then a few days ago, she posted a Snapchat with Anthony Hopkins using some hilarious and hideous filters, but it appears that she will be doing some scenes with Anthony Hopkins and Mark Wahlberg and potentially Laura Haddock's character in London. And maybe around London as well. After all, they aren't just filming in London. There are a lot of locations outside of London that they will be using. Anyways, they were filming in Gosport. And what is at Gosport? Well, the HMS Alliance. And what is the HMS Alliance? Well, it's the last remaining British sub that was used in World War II. And in 2014, they restored it. And now it is a submarine museum. People can walk on board, take tours, and look at what it's like to be inside the submarine. Now, let's take a look at some photos from Gosport and check out what robots were involved. There's Barricade, Bumblebee, Hound, Hot Rod. Bumblebee, again, is seen pictured here with more fans. The Lady, that would be the McLaren 570S. A lot of kids are really, really excited to be there. Here's Hot Rod again. And check out this young lad over here posing with Anthony Hopkins with Bumblebee. What a great photo. What a lucky guy. That's a great photo. And man, what an experience. <laughs> great actor. Such a humble guy. And also an actor that is involved with the filming. And there's Mark Wahlberg. Obviously, a lot of fans are going to be there. So Mark Wahlberg, Isabella Moner, and Anthony Hopkins were at the filming at Gosport. Now... What is going on at Gosport? Like I said before, the HMS Alliance, which could potentially be that sub in the poster. In the poster for Transformers last night, that large banner with Optimus Prime and three dragons, there's a sub that is diving down deep. It's going down. And there's also a scene which Mark Wahlberg and Laura Haddock already filmed inside a sub. I mean, a make-believe sub that was uh, created for the filming inside a studio, inside a, a set, right? So obviously there's gonna be a scene where they're inside the submarine. Now there's a rumor going around saying that the, the submarine is a Decepticon. I don't believe that for one bit because that would mean that two humans, two humans that are trying to stop Decepticons are inside a Decepticon. That seems a little bit unrealistic to me. Um, what if the Decepticon actually transformed? It would end up squishing <laughs> Mark Wahlberg and Laura Haddock's character. So that doesn't make any sense to me. I don't believe for one bit that the submarine is a Decepticon. However, of course, I don't work for the film. I don't know anything about the script. It still could be, possibly. And if it is, I'm just trying to think of all the different characters in the Autobots and the Decepticons that were aquatic characters. Uh, Cybertronians. For example, Tidal Wave, Deep Dive, Depth Charge, Broadsword. It could be any one of these guys. But like I said before, I don't think it's, uh, it's a Decepticon. I think they're just using it as a mode of transportation to get to something that's down in the darkest depths of the ocean. So whatever it is they're trying to reach, it could be a Cybertronian. I don't think that the submarine is a Cybertronian. It's a mode of transportation. 
So uh, that's what's going on. Uh, moving on, let's talk about Mark Wahlberg. Uh, there's this uh, exclusive ET Online, by ET Online I mean Entertainment Online interview with Mark Wahlberg. And I'm going to leave you a link to, uh, on the description box below for that video. You guys can check it out on your own time. Uh, but something very interesting about that interview is that it mentions that this is Mark Wahlberg's last and final week of filming. The filming is still going on though, even though Mark Wahlberg will be done in a week. It's still going on after all. They have to film in other parts of the world. And it just means that his scenes are done. However, he still could come in for reshoots. That's a very, very normal thing in the film industry. But anyways, he's done in one more week and then that will be the end of that. However, we still haven't seen that that uh, scene of filming where it involves um, the King Arthur's Knights uh, going up against armies of Saxon invaders. Apparently, that was supposed to be filmed around this time. Now, things happened. Things could have been delayed. However, it's still possible that it might already have been filmed using second unit. Maybe we just didn't know about it. Maybe it was just filmed in the further countryside of England and we just didn't know about it. So maybe it already happened. Maybe it didn't. Maybe it just got delayed. Another thing that I haven't seen being filmed was Tyrese's scenes. I imagine that Tyrese's scenes uh, would be filmed with him in uniform, in full like military um, uniform camouflage and all that with scenes with um, Josh Duhamel. I imagine that they're going to team up together and fight Decepticons together. So we haven't seen any of that yet. We haven't actually seen Tyrese on set. Now there's one thing that's very interesting. Tyrese posted on his Instagram that he's been to Paris already. Mark Wahlberg has mentioned in this interview that he's been to France. So maybe Mark Wahlberg has actually some scenes with Tyrese and we just know about it. I didn't even know they were going to film in France. If they filmed in France, it must have been a really, really quick scene because we haven't seen any photos of the Autobots or Decepticons in France. So maybe it's just a scene involving humans. Who knows? But anyways, uh, moving on. Um, I want to talk about Stonehenge and I want to say thank you to PJ, uh, PJ Jones because he messaged me saying that um, Stonehenge, like the actual Stonehenge, is going to be closed on September 30th, Saturday, which is yesterday because they're going to be doing some filming. And what we saw there was uh, not a whole lot. Based on these photos from Aaron09345, there's filming there, there's crew over there. But not a whole lot going on. This is the actual Stonehenge. So I imagine they can't do very much with this. After all, they want to preserve the, uh, the well-being of Stonehenge, the structures, and also the area around it. If they're going to set off explosions, it's going to like create a lot of debris and wreck the land. So they don't want to do that, all right? Especially not around the real Stonehenge. Now, Andy Rint Tut uh, posted some photos of... Well, actually, maybe Simon did, and he's just sharing them. Now, here's the actual Stonehenge. And there's some people there. There are Blackhawks there. Check that out. Blackhawks flying around it. And there's crew there. Uh, but uh, not a whole lot going on. Now, this is the actual Stonehenge once again. So I imagine they're just filming some shots of the actual Stonehenge. Getting close-up shots. Some um, uh, aerial shots of it before it gets blown up at the replica. So that is the actual Stonehenge. So in order to make the scenes look authentic, they have to use the real thing. But of course, they built a replica. And here's another photo from Aaron09345 uh, on his Instagram post. On his way to the fake Stonehenge, he saw tanks being transported. Check that out. These are tanks being transported to the fake Stonehenge. So I imagine that if there's going to be tanks, there's, they're going to be using the tank cannons. So there's probably going to be some explosions going off there. And check this out. David Hinnett actually also posted... Um, Photos of the soldiers around the fake Stonehenge. And then, of course, explosions. Now, check this out. This is posted from the Daily Mail Online UK. The headline reads, Stonehenge is under attack. Hollywood Film Studio builds a replica of the 5,000-year-old site for their new Transformers movie as helicopters fly overhead and explosives are detonated on the ground. So you understand why they built a replica. It's because they're going to be setting off explosives and possibly going to blow up Stonehenge. <laughs> That's a pretty big deal. Obviously, you can't do that to the real thing. 
And look at these photos. These are amazing. You got low flying choppers, uh, not just the camera chopper, but the Blackhawks. A lot of people around. You can see Anthony Hopkins looks like some military personnel. What on the earth is going on here? It looks like Anthony Hopkins holding the staff is talking to a Cybertronian who's obviously very, very uh, tall. There's the Porsche Cayenne. Two Blackhawks, low flying aircraft. Uh, low flying aircraft is always cool because, like, it takes a lot of skill to be able to fly like that. Explosions going off. Josh Duhamel is there. Laura Haddock and uh, Mark Wahlberg are seen running, and more and more and more explosions. And just, you know what? It's pretty obvious as to what's going on. There's a battle going on. There's a battle involving Autobots and Decepticons, and of course, it's all done by CG, and the and if you see explosions going off, these these are just background plates. What Michael Bay is doing is is uh, filming background plates so that he can, or rather, ILM Industrial Light and Magic can insert CG robots afterwards. When they hit the ground, explosions go off. When they shoot the ground, explosions go off. So that's what's happening right now. I want to pass you over to the Instagram account to Cool Zinger, aka Paul Har Harwood, and he was there for the filming uh, from afar uh, of the of the uh, fake Stonehenge. And what he posted was pretty awesome. The Autobots are there. We got uh, the entire team minus Optimus Prime, of course, but Hot Rod is there as well. So uh, they're joined in uh, with the for the um, for the filming. Uh, or uh, obviously the Autobots, including Hot Rod, they're going to be fighting whatever it is over there at Stonehenge. We just don't know which Decepticons are going to be there. But anyways, that's pretty awesome. Um, once again, like I said before, um, the uh, the 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 human crew are there, like Anthony Hopkins, and then there's military all over the place. And no sign of Cogman and the lady. It looks like the English Autobots, I like to call them the English Autobots, they're off doing their own thing. I don't know what it is, but I like the fact that they're off doing their own thing. It feels like they're, they are they don't work entirely as a unit. And that just creates for a more, di uh, um, I guess, die not diverse, a more unique plot, okay? A more complex plot, okay? Anyways, moving on, I would like to bring you back to London because the filming is once again back at London and let's go over to London Bridge. Well, at least that's what a lot of foreigners like to call it. London Bridge, also known as London's Tower Bridge. Now it's posted over here that Tower Bridge will have road closures, so expect delays. And some people actually thought that it was for road closures of construction or something else. It's actually for filming. Like I said before, Michael Bay, if he's going to be shooting at foreign locations, he wants to use very famous landmarks. Obviously, Tower Bridge is one of those famous landmarks. And they're using it. So what we have here is some um, uh, aerial shots using this helicopter flying around Tower Bridge. And then here's Bumblebee. Bumblebee's uh, doing a scene at Tower Bridge. And not only that, there are these uh, TRF vehicles in the form of these Lexus SUVs. And then there's looks like some London police cars on his tail. I mean, at the very end of that, uh, of that convoy. And I'm just going to throw this out there. I actually don't think that at this point in the filming... The these uh, TRF guys and the police are actually chasing Bumblebee. I think that Bumblebee is actually leading them. I don't think it's a chase anymore. I think that um, it started off as a chase, but then um, I don't know. Somewhere later in the story, they realize that uh, the Autobots are doing good, or, or they need their help or whatever, right? And then so Bumblebee is actually leading them. At least that's what I think. I could be entirely wrong, but anyways. Now the reason why I think that is because of this. Okay. Let's check out this. Let's go back to the Instagram account of Aaron09345. Follow him on Instagram. I'm just wondering why aren't people following him. Give him a follow on Instagram because he's obviously been posting a lot of really, really great photos. His latest post comes in the form of a video. And this is kind of a spoilerish. So um, if you really don't want to know anything, you might not want to hear what I'm about to talk about. Okay? So... In this video, you see, uh, you see, um, I think this could be, uh, 
uh, Casey Holdenfield. I think it could be Casey Holdenfield because uh, uh, he's. I recognize him from one of the uh, from the previous filming. He's part of Michael Bay's crew. What he's doing here is that he's trying to direct some extras. Okay, he's trying to tell them that hey guys, look excited, look um, uh, look uh, like uh, like you're looking in that direction, and then he's pointing at this direction, and then he says that that is scary. Okay, so once you see that thing, you guys got to run. You guys got to disperse because that over there is something scary. Obviously, he's pointing, a, pointing, he's pointing at a big Decepticon. I don't think that big Decepticon is the sub. I think that whatever Mark Wahlberg and Laura Haddock did uh, from the sub, they used the sub to get down to the deep, whatever they did woke up that deactivated aquatic Cybertronian. Okay, I call him an aquatic Cybertronian because he's he's in the water and he's remaining there, probably sleeping in sleep mode or whatever. And then they accidentally wake it up as an attempt to do something. Uh, they accidentally woke it up and then it arises from the water. The extras, or rather the uh, Londoners, they see it and then they got to run. And uh, what Bumblebee is doing is that uh, he's showing the, um, the, the, uh, the TRF guys that, look... I'm not the enemy. That over there is the enemy. <laughs> so that's what's happening. That's why I don't believe that the submarine is a Decepticon. I never did for once think it was a Decepticon because Laura Haddock and Mark Wahlberg are inside it. The probability of it being Decepticon are just really, really low because of just for the sake of of uh, logic, they wouldn't be... It's too dangerous to be inside a Decepticon. But anyways, there's something bigger than a sub that is coming their way. There's a boss, there's a Decepticon boss, and this is one of the big guys, and I'm saying one of the big guys that the Autobots have to fight. Not just Galvatron, not just uh, the Decepticons that are like driving around, there's a big guy out there, and we still don't know what it is. So um, that's all I have to say in this video. Um, I just wanna make a comment, and I just wanna say that this is a very, very interesting... It's getting to be more and more and more interesting. There are Cybertronians everywhere. Even though that in Age of Extinction, Hound said that we're all that's left, there are actually a lot of Autobots and Decepticons hiding all over the world. And that's what I really like about this film so far, as I've seen the filming through all these photos, and I've learned so much, it makes me really believe that there are Autobots and Decepticons hiding everywhere. And it just makes things feel that the possibilities are endless. It's not definitive that just because they've killed every single Cybertronian Dark of the Moon and, and, uh, and Hound says that they're all that's left, it doesn't mean that. Don't take it at face value. He only knows what he knows. He doesn't know that there are English Autobots out there in London. So they're everywhere and it just opens a whole door of possibilities for what could possibly happen in the future of the films. So that is really awesome. They're everywhere and they're in hiding, hence the phrase, robots in disguise, okay? So what I wanna do next is Twitter questions. Um, let's start off with this question. David asks, I wanna see how it transform. Do you think TF5 has more transformations like in the first three films? I believe that we're gonna see way more transformations. I think KSI is totally out of the picture and we're gonna see more actual transformations, all right? And Age of Extinction was like the bane of transformations. Not only did we get the KSI um, transformers, uh, for the prototypes, and I hated the way they transformed, but a lot of the transformations were hidden and I hated that. So there's no way they would repeat that. I'm just thinking they're bringing back what made Transformers great and they should really bring back the transformations. Now, the next set of questions are really asking the same question. Is Bumblebee going to get uh, his voice back? Thank you to Andy Murphy, Ted Anderson, uh, Lord Louie, Elijah, and Simtron Primus for asking the same question. Is Bumblebee going to get his voice back? I don't know, but I think he's going to get his voice back. After all, there's going to be the, uh, the Bumblebee solo film. And also... Just because Ratchet is dead and he was the supposed to be the only one who's able to fix him doesn't mean that nobody else can fix him. Hound is now the new medic. So Hound could be the one that fixes Bumblebee. I don't think that um, it would be wise to keep Bumblebee talking out of the radio. One of the reasons why people are so tired of Bumblebee 
And seeing him again is because he talks out of a radio. And you can only give so much personality and character to a character that only talks out of the radio. And he's limited to whatever he can say through a radio. So I think that if they really want to uh, make his character shine again, they got to bring back his voice. So Transformers Last Night needs to be that film where he talks again. Now, um, there's another question from Simtron Primus. You think Barricade will have command of the Decepticons for a while? I don't think so. I, I just, I, I don't think so just because um, there are, uh, Barricade is kind of like a, um, he's, he's a minion. I think they're all Decepticon soldiers and I think they all have their, their, uh, their little, um, uh, they, they all know what they need to do. I don't think that, that they're going to provide so much depth to these characters that, uh, Barricade ends up being a leader. I think that they all uh, um, they all are loyal to Megatron, and because of that, they all know what to do. After all, they're able to communicate from far, far away, and they mobilize uh, from far, far away. So if Megatron calls them, they know what to do. Zachary Roseberry asks, is there the possibility of Hot Rod going through his famous transformations, uh, transformation into Rodimus Prime and TF5, TF6, or or later on. Um, of course, definitely. I just don't think that transformation is going to happen in TF5. It could happen in TF6. Um, it could happen in TF7, but I don't think it's going to happen in TF5. I think it's very crucial to the whole story, the whole Unicron story. So it ne kind of needs to happen. Archangel Michael asks, um, do you think Evac will ever be in the Transformers live action movies? He was in Transformers The Ride. I don't think so at all. I think they're going to keep the ride with the ride. And I don't think Evac is going to ever show up um, in, uh, in Transformers uh, live action films. Because he's also a fictional type of uh, uh, a vehicle. He's not a real vehicle. And, you know, they'd have to create that. And why on earth would they create, um, like in, in the story, why would there be an Autobot that looks like that? It doesn't make any sense. And that is all I have for questions, and that's all I have to say in this episode. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this episode did come with uh, a bunch of minor spoilers, uh, but uh, it, it really makes you realize that things are coming together. We're starting to realize uh, where the battles are going to play take place. We're starting to realize what kind of... Uh, large foes are going to um, appear in this film and we're starting to learn more about what the characters are, are doing and how they're involved so uh, why don't you throw me your theories about what you think is going to happen in the comments section below and there you have it as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Rage Nation, also follow me on Twitter, Rage Nation, my name is Alex, you. thanks for watching, I'll see you next time, peace Highly possible, totally but the only uh, thing I got to say about that is that they're turning on stealth mode to blow